Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share a kind of a different video. I'd like to share a super easy handmade DIY journal from a 12 by 12 pattern paper. Actually you don't need a 12 by 12 paper because for one journal you only need a 6 by 12 paper. That means you cut your paper in half. The first score line is at 4 7 8 inches and then you fold your page. This is going to be the cover of the little notebook. And in the next step you don't align the paper on the left side of your scoreboard but you align the 5 inch scoring um, line to the folded um, cover. So you have the score line perfectly aligned and you can close the little booklet. Now I'm going to round my edges. This is optional. You don't need to do this. And this will be our notebook cover. What I'm doing next is I'm making some marks with a pencil where I want to create two holes to add in an elastic. And that little notebook is kind of a traveler's notebook style, but just very simple. You can protect the holes when you add some eyelets to them. Unfortunately, I couldn't find mine. You can create any kind of journal. You can, for example, make a mini album for scrapbooking or you can make a junk journal. And I want to create an art journal, so I'm using mixed media paper. For the pages, I'm cutting the paper at five and a half inches. This will be the height of the pages. And next I cut them at nine and a half inches. For this video I just create six pages with three papers, but of course you can add more to the journal. I also use my scoreboard to fold them. Of course you don't have to, you can just fold them in half. Now I'm also using the corner rounder and round the edges on the folded line. So the crease is a little bit smaller than the actual pages and they fit better into the elastic of the journal. Now I will add in the elastic that will hold the pages. You can make this journal also from different materials. For example, you can use the vegan leather um, which is sometimes called craft tags or snap pap. This will be even more sturdy, so this would make a really good traveler's notebook, for example. And here you can see why it makes sense to round the corners at the crease side of the inside pages, because the elastic um, keeps them more safe in the book. Now we only need a closure for the book and I will use a bread together with a piece of cord. I just made a mark with my pencil at the middle of the right flap and I will add the bread here. And of course you can cover up um, the inside when you've added the bread with just a piece of decorative paper, but I don't mind that, I will just leave it as it is. Here I'm tying the cord to the bread and this will make a perfect closure. Now I'm going to create one of the inside pages 
And what I want to do is I want to use my Distress Oxide Sprays. I have to say that I am, I am not a fan of these sprays. Whenever I've tried them out, it turned out really ugly and muddy and I, I hate the result. But I have these sprays, so I must use them because they are very expensive. I picked out the spiced marmalade, the picked raspberry and one of the blues, I believe it's the Mermaid Lagoon. I'm adding a lot of water um, because I have no idea what to do so I just add water to the pages and I dry them with my heat tool. During the drying process I once added some more water droplets to create more texture. As I'm not happy with the background because it looks totally flat and without any dimension, I decide I will add another layer and first I try it with the spray and as this doesn't make me happy, I use the ink pad. I don't work directly on my glass plate because the inks don't work on glass very good as they run together to one big puddle of of ink and you don't get these nice tiny speckles. What I'm using here is a piece of a baking mat but of course you can use your craft mat. I dried this again and now I'm using the mustard seed and I want to add another layer. I think now it looks better and I just want to add a darker color and I'm using the wilted violet. When everything is dry, I add some background stamping and I'm using archival inks. Um, of course, you could also use the Distress Oxide on this paper as there is no gesso and it's a mixed media paper, but the oxides will take some time to dry and I want to keep on working, so I'm using just the archival inks. And I'm picking colors that match the background. All stamps I'm using are some of my mixed media stamps. The first one, the grid texture, was from the mixed media mark stamp set and this is a stamp from the grungy stuff stamp set. I will have linked all the stamps in the video description. Also linked up is a blog post for this project where you can watch some close-up images. Also a nice thing about this journal is that you can take out every single page and create 
flat on your surface and you don't have a a bulky background so it's super perfect for stamping and it makes it a bit easier than working in a messy book. The border I'm using here is one of my doodle borders and I will link up every stamp set I've used in the video description. I'm adding a bit more texture with one of my textured stamps. I can't really remember which stamp set this was, but I believe maybe the textured fishes, but as I said, you will find it in the video description. For the main image I'm going through my stash of jelly prints and I'm searching for some papers that would fit the page and I want to stamp one of my brand new flower stamps to it and then cut it out and stick it to the page. I decided to use this one because it's very bright and there is not too much texture. As I'm working on an acrylic background I'm using stays on ink for stamping because it dries the fastest. After stamping this image, I decided that I want to stamp it twice and paper piece everything. That means that I cut each part out and glue everything together later on my page. So I can use that um, turquoise color for the leaves and that yellow for the flower itself. I'm stamping the flower directly to the page and then I will glue in all the bits and pieces. I'm using just a simple glue stick for that. I wanted to add a bit more yellow to the page, so I'm using just the yellow Uniposca marker and create some dots all over the page. I decided I want to add some more depth to the flower by adding some shadowing and I'm using the Pit Artist pens for that. To finish the whole page up, I add a sentiment that I've created with my Mixer Sentiment stamp set and I've stamped the whole set to a jelly print and then cut out the words that I want to use. 
And that is my finished page. It's the first page in my new journal. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you like that little journal we've created. I wish you a wonderful day. Bye!